I believe that it started. And so. It says it is. Okay. Then what I'll do. And there's Diane. All right. Let's have a word of prayer. And then, and then um, we'll have a special from our sister Valerie. Loving Father in heaven, it's another Wednesday. It's the middle of the week. It's amazing to think how fast time flies. But um, we know that time is in your hand. There's nothing that catches you by surprise. You've actually seen how the Sabbath will, will go from now. And so we can rest and trust you that you have the best outcome for our lives. You have plans that you've made for us to prosper us, to give us a future, to give us a hope. And, um, you know, I just pray that throughout this, this evening, throughout this study, that we would each look at ourselves and we would look at you and, and judge ourselves to see whether or not we be in the faith and what needs to take place in our hearts, in our lives to deepen that commitment to you. Um, but Father, we know that it's truly you that pull us towards yourself. And so I pray that, that your strong love would, um, would, would bring us close to you, would break the, the hardiness of our hearts. Um, you want to give us soft hearts. You want to give us new spirits. And so I just pray that we would all cooperate with your leading. May this story not, or not study, may this study not bring anyone else here glory, but yourself. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I will spotlight Valerie. And take it away. Okay, the song I'm going to sing is How Great Thou Art. And um, it's just one of my favorite hymns. And um, it, I'm doing a version that also has um, the chorus of It Is Well With My Soul, which is another favorite hymn of mine. And so I'm going to sing that. And it's just, I'm just so grateful that God just, he, it's just so awesome. And it's, it's overwhelming to just how much he loves us Amen. and cares. <laughs> oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When, oops, when through the woods, and forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountains grander, and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross, my burdens gladly bearing, 
he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. It is well with my soul with my soul it is well it is well with my soul when christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then i shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my god how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art, how great thou art. Amen. Amen. Praise Thank God. Amen. <laughs> for blessing us with your musical, musical mm, talent. You're welcome. Well, that sets us right up for the thing that we need most. Tonight's study is on the thing that we need most. And, um, you know, I, this, this, well, I don't even know how to really start this and like introduce this. I think I'm really excited to share this with you guys. <laughs> and I want to ask you some questions first about what is the thing that we all need most? Like, like, we're not even going to the Bible. We can go to the Bible if you want to. But what's the thing that we need most? I want some answers. What's the thing we need most? What do you need most, Dave? Oh, salvation. If I say, what are salvation. we going to do? I need support from human beings. You need support? Okay, that's true. Uh, Diane, what do you need most? <laughs> Put you on the spotlight. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of what I need. You know, I, I, I really do. I, I, I really can't complain and, you know, where I'm at in life. So I'm grateful to God for what he has given me, you know, and it's not just it's not material things. I'm grateful because I have salvation. I'm so grateful because I have his life. So I don't know uh, the thing I need most. I have mm. and that's Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, how about let me let's look at some of these statistics that I found here that I thought were very interesting about things that we generally need. Okay. Um, here. How long can you go without food? I asked some. I asked Google some <laughs> questions. I asked Google some questions, and these are some of the answers that it gave us. It said um, a court, an article in Archive for Kremlingly, whatever that word states that the body can survive for eight to 21 days without food and water and up to two months if there's access to adequate water intake. Modern day hunger strikes have provided insight into starvation. So two months without, if you get water, you can go two months without eating food. That's, that's, that's pretty interesting. I don't know if I'd want to go two months without eating food, but man. But I've known people that have gone longer. Mercy. Yeah. When I did a Guinness's Book of Records, his was over a year. What? Yeah. He probably he probably did liquid though. Probably had yeah. liquid. No, he just drank water. Oh mercy! Uh, speaking of that, I feel like getting a green juice right now. Um, <laughs> Rob, you were gonna say something? <laughs> yeah, please. You had your hand raised, Rob, but you're muted. No, I was you're, muted. you're muted, Rob. Okay. 
Yeah, you froze up, but I didn't know if it was you or me. I think it was my computer froze up <laughs> there for a little bit. You were going to say something or, or are you just saying that? I think Lad. No, Lad I was just telling my wife about that. I think I think it was you because we were hearing him. Okay. Yeah. Lad? Okay. Lad, you what? were going to say something? No, I'm stretching. That's all I was doing. <laughs> all right. Man, I, I gotta watch it. This is I gotta watch it. This is like being at an auction. You gotta watch don't nod your head or raise your hand. People call on you. <laughs> How long can you go without sleep? Oh according to Google, it says 264 hours. Oh the easy experimental answer to the question is 264 hours or about eleven days. In 1965, Randy Gardner, a 17-year-old high school student, set this apparent world record for a science fair. Several other normal research subjects have remained awake for eight to 10 days in carefully monitored experiments. So 264 hours or 11 days without sleep. Do we need sleep? Do we need food? Okay. How long can you go without water? Google says, the body needs a lot of water to carry out many essential functions, such as balancing the internal temperature, keeping cells alive. As a general rule of thumb, a person can survive without water for three days. That's right. Do you know about the rule of threes, Diane? No, but I knew it was three days that you can have to live well, with water. So this is what's interesting. As I asked Google these questions, I actually was learning something. Don't figure. There's a thing called the rule of threes, and we're going to find that out next. How long can you go without air? So you can survive three minutes without breathable air, unconsciously or unconsciousness, generally with pr protection or in icy water. You can survive three hours in a harsh environment, extreme heat or extreme cold, and you can survive three days without drinkable water, and you can survive three weeks without food. So this is the rule of threes. You can go three minutes without air, three days without water, I guess, no, three hours in a harsh environment, three days without water and three weeks without food. It's the rule of three. Yeah, I just, Google has some things to teach us. The next question though, I think is important. How long can you go without God? <laughs> well, you know, once you have him, that would be a problem, but the world without him, are living their lives separated from him. Uh, but are they, are they really living life? Well, they're here. Yeah, they're living. But I'm saying you're talking about abundant life that he gives in salvation. Hey, this is Rob has something to say. I can already, I can already hear it. <laughs> it. It all depends on quite what you want to mean by go without God, because really, if we are completely without God. We have no life, period. Uh, he is life. Without him, there's no life. If he is the source and there is no God, there is no life. If the source yeah. ain't there. Right. Right. So well, we, can, we can go with go ahead, Dave. Sorry. No, go no, ahead. We, we, can, we can go into eternity without God. I mean, uh, it depends on what your doctrine is, but I believe that. We can be eternally separated from God just the same way that we are eternally with God if we're saved. Well, it's not about what our doctrine is. It's about what the Bible says, not what, right. not what our doctrine is. Um, okay. We're going to see some things. We're going to see some things about this because this is a question that I don't want to just say, oh, well, you can't go this. Way. You can't. I want to look at what the Bible says, and then let's let's make our decision off of that. So let's see what the Bible says about how long we can go without God, because I think this is a crucial thing for, for certain people. So Matthew 4, verse 4. Does anyone want to read this for us? But he answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So let's put that in a different way then. So let me, or, or, or how I work it. If it says man shall not live by bread alone. So that means if you just have bread alone, what are you not doing then? Not getting spiritual. Not food. living. 
You're not living. That's right, lad. That's right. If you just have bread alone, Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone. So if you only have bread, according to Jesus, you're not living. Well, I'm looking at the text. I'm looking, Rob, you have something you want to say now too. I can already, Rob, I mean, you're I, yourself away. I, I, I can see the same sentence, but look at it different. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. He, he's not it. saying that we can't live, but we are not to live. We're not to live by bread alone, but by every word from God. We can live just eating bread or just eating food, but that's not the kind of life he really wants us to have. And so with God, we can have something much more, which Jesus said, I come to give them life and to give it um, that they might have life and okay. have it abundantly. Okay. I think I, I see. I like where you're going with that thought about Jesus came to give us life. You see, I think that there's some misconceptions or misunderstandings. I, we're going to keep looking at more verses. This isn't the only verse. I'm not going to build I, my thought on one scripture, <laughs> but I think that. I think, think, oh, sorry, lad. Go ahead. Yeah, what's the context that say it in? Because that's important. Yes, if we I don't, don't have... understand the context that say it in, then you know it's easy to come to different conclusions about it. But the context is in, is important to help interpret the text. So this, I haven't so looked at it. I'm driving. So I'll the context is this, lad. Say, Jesus is in the wilderness, and Satan is coming to him, tempting him. He hadn't eaten for forty days and was still living. Remind you that we said three weeks without food and you would die. Jesus went 40 days, which is which is twice three weeks without food, right? That's almost okay. six weeks he went without eating anything. But he was yet still alive. Why? This text. He didn't need bread. He had every word that came out of the mouth of God. That kept him alive. And of course, I'm 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 kind of really hitting this point hard a little bit. I want to I want to pull it out. There's other texts we're going to look at too. But he didn't, he didn't need the bread alone. He didn't need bread, period, actually, at this point. I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not suggesting, please, please, if you're watching this online, do not go without eating food for 40 days. Don't do it. You'll, most people who've tried have died um, that didn't do any food or water. You know, there's pastors who've died. Well, you know, who've died. Go if ahead, you think now. about it, if you think about it, what Satan was asking him to do was actually asking him to separate himself from God. Right. So the idea to that, to well, yeah, I mean, he was at, to go to go some other way, other than the way that was complete submission to his father would, would have right. to be the lead. Right. So Satan had already disconnected himself and he was trying to get Christ to do that. So the idea, what would happen if, any being disconnects yourself from God, they would die. Right. So the, the whole thing is he's saying, you know, you're hungry, you're dying, and, you know, you need bread. And he's saying, you know what, to separate from God, that's the worse your death. And that's right. a literal death as well as complete death. So, so I kind of, I don't, never mind, that's, that's just a thought or two. No, that's great. That's great. I actually was listening to Desire of Ages today. And um, I was I, this chapter came up. I, I probably got like fourteen chapters done while I was working. And um, uh, th at this point, it said that Jesus was extremely hungry. Like he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't just like, oh, yeah, I'm fine. Da -da. He was like emaciated and starving. And that's when that's when Satan came to tempt him with this. So it wasn't like he wasn't hungry. It wasn't like you know he wasn't physically in pain or physically suffering because of this but he was succeeding at a point where generations before him have all failed right but so this is the first text and it's not the last text let's look at the next text next text is john 15 4 and 5 it says remain in me as i also remain in you no branch can bear fruit by itself it must remain in the vine. 
neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, you, if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Now, if you think about a branch that is by itself, what is that? Is that, would you, I mean, I guess if you cut the branch off directly, like you're pruning a tree and you cut the branch off directly, the branch is still technically alive. It still has life in it. But would you expect that branch to bear fruit next year? No. Why not? Because it's not connected. There's no sap. There's no sap, right? There's no life. life. It's not connected to the source of life. That's right. And I think that Jesus is saying the same thing here. You know, what is really living? What is really living? Is living just eating bread? Or is there more to living than just eating bread? Is there more to being alive than just eating bread? What was the purpose of God creating us and giving us this life so that we can just eat bread or so that we be in connection with him, in relation with him? Well, that's the thing. We can have physical life apart from a oneness with God. We can have that, but we cannot have an abundant life. We can't have the kind of life that God wants us to have apart from him. Now, it is true that if we're completely separated from God, there be no life because he is the source of all life. But just because a person does not want any kind of relationship with him just because they don't trust him any doesn't mean he completely withdraws himself from them and therefore they die. So this is actually, if I can address that, that's actually where the grace of God is shown the most. Yes. Because you see, once a person severs themselves from God, as you said, death is the the result. But God is so merciful that even though the people separate themselves from him, he still gives them life. He's really merciful. Yes. If it was, if if we're gonna be honest and do a science experiment, you know, and this was a, this was a thing. If you unplug this cable, what happens? The power goes out. That's what should happen. If we unplug ourselves from God, the power should go out immediately. It should, but God's mercy and God's grace doesn't allow that to happen. And I think that right. this verse is saying the same thing that the last verse was saying about not living by the. You you don't live unless you live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God you're not really living if you're just eating bread. Just like this. If you're just, I think this is even interesting. If you're just a branch that's, that's, that's not connected to the vine, you're also not living. You're really, what you're doing is you're withering away slowly because we know if you cut it off, it doesn't die immediately, right? But eventually it dies. But those who are connected to the vine will never die, according to Jesus. He says, if you, he says, those who believe in me shall never die. This isn't John. Um, okay. Any other comments or should I go to the next verse? Yes. Yeah, so so I... oh. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, brother, oh, whatever yeah. his name is. Yes. Um, hey. Talking about figurative languages, too, because Jesus, when he says, you don't live by bread alone, you live by bread alone. The mouth of God. The life that he's talking about is a literally saying life, like how we have death and life uh, as we understand it, or is he saying more than that? So we have to define these terms that we're using. So I don't I don't want I don't want to prolong anything, but just touch on these terms like life, death, fruit, all these different figurative terms. So we can get a bit of so yeah, it, it was, was, I, I hear what you're saying, but you know, I think the Bible, I think if we take it at face value and and make it even more strenuous than possibly we need to, I think if there's safety in that. I think there's safety in taking what Jesus says as, as literal in some regards, because, you know, Jesus didn't play around with his words. He didn't just say things just to be heard or just, just so that, you know, to bring attention to himself. Everything that Jesus said everything that's written down that that he said 
is given to us for our salvation, for our edification, for us to see what love really is, and for us to understand God's instructions. Because Jesus was literally just speaking for God the entire time. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. So when you see Christ speaking, you're pretty much hearing God speak. We can go back to the burning bush, and it was the same exact way. When Christ, Christ was the one that God spoke through for humanity, God did speak to humanity for a while. But then when sin came, there was a, there was a barrier. The next time we see God speaking to humanity was when Jesus got baptized and God literally from heaven said, that's my boy, that's my son, and I'm pleased in him, right? So Christ is the mouthpiece of God directly, you can say here in, in these things. So they're very important words. And yes, we can say figurative and metaphorical and these things like that, but there is deeper truths and deeper meanings to it than just try to try to not if we, if, we, if we take a lot of things and spiritualize it away, we lose some of the seriousness of what is actually being said here. You know, I, I really think that a life not connected to God is not worth living. It doesn't pay. It's not rewarding. It's short and it's, unful it, it, it's unfulfilling. You're not going to, you're going to have, I mean, you know, in, according to the quote unquote world, yeah, you might have pleasures. You might have you know, the, the things, but even in the pleasures, it's all kind of mostly poison. All the things that are quote unquote pleasurable are all affected negatively. They all shorten your lifespan. They, they hurt other people. They hurt yourself. Someone wanted to say something? Yes. Yes. As, uh, me, as, as I hear you talking night, everybody, what it reminds me of is, um, in the when he was being tempted and the serpent said you'll surely not die i mean uh -huh. i always imagine that she takes a bite of the fruit i mean we tend to say it's an apple and she checks herself and say but i'm still alive but the sort of life that was being referred to maybe not that you're not breathing but you lose that life in christ and you have to understand it's a different sort of life than just waking right. up in the morning and living. So That's yes, right. there's, a, there's a much deeper meaning, yes. That's right. <laughs> I, I, the meaning, the real meaning, the real meaning, because Eve died. Eve yeah. died spiritually. Her faith yeah. was dead. Her yeah. faith was dead. Her connection to God was dead. It's yeah. only because of Christ coming and living and dying and resurrecting again that the bridge has really been done. Everything is on faith of that. Right. Everything that happened in the past was on faith of what Jesus was going to do. But the death, when we, when, we, when, we, when we sever our life from God, our judgment in heaven, we're, we're not in the books. We've erased ourselves from the books of heaven. And you can't, you can't expect to live. Go ahead, Diane. But are you talking about a person who already knows and then back turns away? Are you talking about people who are just in this world? Because people that are in this world are separated from God. They do not. I don't, they only have the life that he gives, but they don't have a life connected to him. That's everybody until they accept Christ. Right. So this, I mean, Sister White writes about it. And she says some things that I have a hard time, hard time. I shouldn't say a hard time with, but I. I have to see that God is merciful at the end of this thing. Think about the slave. You know what she says about the slave that the master didn't teach about God. Remember what she says about it, right? Yeah. That that life is like a life that that I don't want to say should have never had been, but they're going to they're, they're, say it louder so that I don't have to say it. Like uh, they're going to be treated as if they never had been. So they're not going to rise to the judgment and, you know, that kind of thing. You were just going to be. I don't have a problem with that. That's merciful because the because the master, the slave owner, is getting punished. Over. That's right. That's right. So the master is getting not, punished. It's not a bad them. statement to me. Oh, they're not going to be punished. Well, what I'm saying is, you know, some people would like to think, well, God is just going to save all the people who didn't. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they were good, or maybe they they didn't. You know, I, look, it's not for me to make those decisions, and that's not the point of this study tonight. It's just things to think about. You know, yeah. I, I think I think that whether the person knows the truth about about God or whether the person is a Christian, whether the person is not, if we are not in the vine, we can't expect to have life 
or you know, and maybe yeah, eternal life. We could we could say eternal life, but but true life, true living, the way that God wants us to live, we can't do it apart from Him. Well, it is eternal life that He's giving us because that life is in His Son, and when we right. know the Father and the Father, that's what we have that's right. eternal life, and we don't die. We 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 don't die because then we when we uh, we just sleep because the uh, that we don't have the death that was as punishment, which is eternal separation from him. We just have sleep. So in that sense, he says we don't die because we're not dead. We're just sleeping. Right. Well, that's why. Yeah, that's why he said we never die, even if we do die. But the next verse. So this is interesting. It says, whoa, whoa, this is whoa, Jeremiah whoa. 10. Whoa. Jeremiah 10. Hey, you missed me. Wait, oh, Glad ahead, had Glad. a statement. <laughs> yeah, I was I was waiting patiently in the wings. Go man. ahead. You're a patient you saint. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, one thing that I think we're going to see here is you're going to find both a literal and a spiritual application, and both are true. Right. The, the fact if, if you know and the brother said talking about the words and trying to define him so in the idea of the first text that we looked at um a man uh, cannot live by bread alone you know you talked about the abundant life and the literal life both are true here you can do nothing without me both are true without christ continually giving us life i can't do nothing but also in context to this that's I, that's not what I see. It's talking about in John 15, you know, the fruit and the brother said, how do you define words? If we talk or think about the fruit, Galatians chapter five talks about the fruit of the spirit. And so Jesus is saying the 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 results of the spirit of God, the, the degree of love, my love, my peace. You can't do nothing to produce that without uh, being connected to me. So right. in the context here, he says, you can do nothing apart from me. In the context, it's about bearing the fruit that he promises to all of us if we're connected to him. And, oh. you know, there's the world has a peace, you know, the world. And then he has a peace. The world's peace is based upon circumstances. His is not and passes understandings. That's so right. there's a world's wisdom. There's his wisdom. So it's not just to say that people can't have some contentment. He's talking about a specific um degree of his fruit that or, or his spirit and what would result from that and they're separated from him there is nothing sorry i'm coming over a real sketchy place in the road well, you're fine <laughs> look i agree with you Apart i think I, I i don't disagree with you at all that there's multiple applications and yeah i was using this one because uh and you're right there but you know when you think about the fruit of the spirit you got to remember, his father is the husbandman, right? Right? Christ's father is the husbandman. We all understand that? Yeah. yeah. And what, what does the husbandman do with branches that don't bear fruit? Prunes them. He doesn't prune them. He no, cuts no, no. them all. He prunes, no, he he prunes, wait, wait, wait. He prunes the one that he knows has potential to bear more fruit. The one, the one that doesn't bear fruit. Oh, he cast he cuts them and the fire. That's right. He cuts it off and casts it away to be what? Burn. Burned. Burn. So what do you think? If you're not bearing fruit, if you says apart from me, you're not bearing fruit, you can't do anything. What is the other? What is the like what is the conclusion for a branch that's not bearing fruit? You're gonna it cut burned. off and burn. Is that yeah. living? Is that life? It's oh. burned. This is a strong, these are strong statements. I I uh, I went through this and I realized I was like, Lord, help me, please help me. Help me. And you know, the secret to all this is abiding in Christ. We'll get to that, we'll get to there because. The end of it is we're going to end with uh well let, let's get to the end but it, it's really abiding in Christ. Um, mm -hmm. Jeremiah ten twenty three. You want to read this one? Sir? I know, O oh Lord, that the way of man is not in himself; that it is not in man who walks to direct his steps. This is profound. You know, 
the world tells you, Disney tells you, follow your heart. You know, Oprah says, Oprah says, you are your own spiritual guide, or you need to go look within yourself and find your spiritual guide. And, and every path leads to all, you know, all the, all the, the mumbo jumbo, the, the, the way of man is not in himself. It is not up to us to direct our own steps. It is not up to us. We didn't make ourselves. We can't direct ourselves. Who is it up to? Well, let's continue. Because <laughs> we're going to see the thing that we need most. <laughs> we're going to see what we need most. Some direction would be good. So even Jesus himself. Uh, you want to read this one first, Dave? Can you see it? John 5, 19. Yes. Uh, so Jesus explained, I tell you the truth. The son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the father doing. Whatever the father does, the son also does. So, wait, maybe, maybe I want Rob to comment on it first. Yes. <laughs> I'll get myself in trouble if, if, if I say, I, I think this text is really strong here, but Rob, wait, what do you say? What do you think this text is saying? And in, 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 in the light of everything we've been talking about, not being able to do things without being connected to, 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 the, to the source. I think Jesus is saying that he doesn't do anything on his own accord. He doesn't not, or he cannot. I, I don't think it's a matter that he cannot but that he chooses that that's what his life is going to be is a reflection of the father. And so he does whatever it is that the father is directing. Rob, Rob if what we're going to be true to the text, whatever he, sees, the text. He whatever, whatever he sees his father doing, none of us can see what God is doing. So how did Jesus on earth Oh, 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 did Jesus on earth see what his father was doing? We can't, the where the was it? Man, see God in there? They know no. it's the word. Okay. And the spirit. And the text the, said, I tell you the truth. The I tell son, you the truth. The truth. This is the truth now. The son can do nothing by himself. I'm going to accept that. Nothing. I read Even it Jesus, on. Huh? So the father, he said, he, look, he said, I'm not the one saying. He says it, and I think he wants to stress home a point. You know, everything, I think here, he's acknowledging his father as a source of all. Mm. You know, as there's a text that said, as the father has life in himself, so has he given to the son to have life in himself. So the son can have life in himself because the father has given it to him. So I think here <laughs> is him acknowledging who the true source of everything that he does is. Look here, I couldn't do this if it wasn't for the Father. I can't do it by myself if it's because of the Father. He's pointing us to the true source here. Rob, I hear what you're saying. And it's not, you know, does, does Jesus need the Father for existence? No. He has life in himself, just like the Father has life in himself. Because the Father gave him to have life in himself. But he was here on earth as a man. He was here on earth as a man and he submitted himself to be lower than the angels. And he says right here, he can't do anything. I can't do anything by myself. Okay. You know, I want you to understand how far that goes. Okay. If you're saying that, here. if you're I, saying that, you're saying it's impossible for Jesus to have sinned. No. no, no hold on. So this is so. What I think Jesus, another thing too, Jesus was here as a man speaking right here, right? As a son of man right here. He is our example to tell us how much we need to be plugged into the source. Hmm. You know? Right. So, yeah. So it's as our example. So, yeah. I think, I think that it's important for us. This text, this text goes right back to that first text in Matthew where it says, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Every word that proceeds out of God's mouth was what Jesus was living by. Everything that Jesus see his father doing is what he does. And what does the father do? The father works works of righteousness. The father works works of love, of justice, of mercy, right? 
And so all the things that the father is doing is the things that we should also be doing. We can't, obviously, like Dave said, we can't see the father. No man has seen the father at any time except the son. But we can see the son. He rebuked, was it Thomas? He said, how long have I been with you that you asked me to show you the father? If you've seen me, you've seen the father. So we can, Dave, have a glimpse, have an idea of who the father is and how the father is. Because God, going back to that text, God was in Christ reconciling the world. So really, if you think about even this text, God... Jesus says, even the words he speaks, he's doing, he, the father tells him what to say and he does it. The father was leading Jesus in every aspect of his life because he was fully surrendered, fully submitted. Right. He, his will was in the father. The father was in the son. They were working together. And this is what life is about. If you're not doing that, I'm telling you, it's not living. Well, I thought it was old. not living in jesus okay all right but remember the prayer in john 17 3 when jesus was praying that we could have that connection with the father because we don't we don't know that total surrender and submission i was talking today it was when i was talking to donna that is this whole submission thing it turns it turns my world upside down because all my life I, I've been told you study hard, you work hard, you be ambitious, you acquire things, that sort of thing. That's what the world teaches us. If you want something, you focus on it long enough and positive thoughts and all of this mumbo jumbo that comes with life. So you yeah, have to unlearn all of this. So in the way that Jesus was submitted to the Father, if we are able to be submitted to hit the Father that way, we can accomplish all of those things. But your question about if, because God is the source of all things, the Father. And if the Father decided to obliterate all of us, including his son, I believe he could. He said he, said he, he gave to. everything to his son. That is where this Trinity discussion about equality comes in because the Father has given everything to the Son, but the Father has given it to him. He could take it away too. That's my opinion still. But yes. No, that's, you're, you're right. I mean, God has, the, God has the authority to do anything he wants. Who's going to tell God no? Who's going to tell God stop or don't? You know, is except he, for Moses. Moses. Moses was like, no, don't wipe them out. Blot me out of the book. Don't blot them out. And yeah. God listened to Moses, right? Uh, uh, Moses was definitely just like Jesus in that regard. Or maybe Jesus was just like Moses in that regard or whoever, you know? But and Jesus, Jesus right. is God, right? Jesus is, is God, right? He's divine, yes, but he's not his father. Okay. The son of the father. Right. So, okay. I, you know, these are, these, are, these are really crucial things to think about. And... Go ahead. You want to say something? Um, just, no, I don't want to divert, but just a context with what that text was, what was said before that. He had, the, 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 the John 5, 90, he had just had healed the layman by Bethsaida pool. Mm -hmm. And they were on him. And Jesus says, you know, why, why are you doing this on the Sabbath? He says, but Jesus answered and said, my father worked. So I work. And then it says the Jews sought the more to kill him because not, he had not only broken the Sabbath, but he also said that God was his father making right. himself equal with God. Right. So the Jews know that the fact that he says God was his father, it was making him equal with God. Right. And that's, that's very important. important. So in this text here, in this so text here, that's huh? faith, faith, that's something not, the text that they're missing. When Jesus healed the paralytic man, he said before he did it, so that you can know that I am God. I'm going to heal this man. That's what he was driving at. No, no I didn't know he said, said that. that. Mm -hmm. He never said no, that. No, no, I'm paraphrasing, obviously. I, I don't know the Bible. No, but we have to take the scripture from yeah. what he said. He never said that. I, I, don't, I didn't memorize it verbatim. I'm I know. Looking at the text I'm being right careful. Now. But just be careful when quoting what he said. He didn't say that because you'll know that I'm because he never said he, no, was he never lying. said that. No, no never he was alluding to it. He was alluding to no, it. No, he never did. No, oh he, dear. He didn't. Text. Go to the text. No, yeah, I'm we just, at it we right just read it, Dave. But Go that's to not the subject. Dave, 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 why I'm would Jesus it. why would Jesus do anything to say I'm God when he no. says that the only true God is the Father? Trust me, trust me. 
He knew that he, he was. Know, I trust no man. Yeah. <laughs> look, hey, look, look, Dave, 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 Dave. We we can discuss this in a little bit. Or how about let's have a specific a specific right, topic on it because it'll be good. Because I remember, I remember this things. text. I remember this text too. Well, it's John, look, it's, it's John, John five. It's John five seventeen. John I think. five. He, he referred to his father working. So he, he referred to his father working and he's working. Where's eighteen? Eighteen oh, says it's, it's therefore eighteen. The, it's 18. 18. John five the eighteen. The one right before the this one. to kill him because not only had broken the Sabbath, but he said that God was his father. He didn't say that I was God. He says God okay. was his okay. father. But let's go make on it, because this is not the subject it, tonight. Make it, make it, make it, uh, like you said, saved by by nation. So I was thinking about this, you know, and as I was looking through this, I was I was considering what is the thing that we need most? Is it is it that we need God most in this regard? Is it that we need God's law the most? Is it you know the commandments, the precepts? Uh, is it that we need Jesus the most? Hey, delete. Good to see you, brother. Is it that we need Jesus' death the most? Like what? Do you, what do you guys think? You know, I'll, I'll close this here because I don't even need to read these because I've been around the plenty of the, the time and everything like that. But um, with with everything that we've discussed today, what what do you guys what do you guys feel like? What do you guys think it is that we need the most? Because well, we we need God. We can't separate out the different aspects. You can't say, well, we 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 need the crucifixion of Christ. We we need His sacrifice, but we don't need His life. Well, we need his life and we need sacrifice. Yeah, you, you can't say we need this one, but not that one. We, we need the peace of God, but we don't need the love of God. Well, we we can't true. do that. It. You can't even separate those two. Right. Well, you can't separate any of it, really. If, if you do, you have none of it. Isaac, why don't you tell us what you see first and let everybody add what they had, because you apparently are trying to see something. So just share it. <laughs> so these are my thoughts. I, I actually didn't, I, I, don't, I didn't have a, a hard nail down point. You know, I think, I think what we need most is a relationship with God. I think that's what we need most. God is there. And as we discussed with the branches being severed from the vine, they still live somewhat, but they didn't live long and they weren't fruitful. Man can still live by bread eating, but he's not going to live a very good life. It's just going to be bread all day. He's not going to have any depth to it. You know, um, we saw that that uh, if, if what was the other one? It says that man's way is not in himself. I think what we need the most is to have a relationship with God, because if you don't have a relationship with God and, and not just a relationship, because you could have a bad relationship with God. Right. So maybe I need to be specific. We need to have a good, open, honest relationship with God, a trusting relationship with God. Uh, 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 we need to have a friendship, a, 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 a marriage type of a love relationship, a relationship that not only is he jealous of, but we're jealous of. A relationship that we don't let anyone else get involved, or anyone else get in the way, or anyone else determine what it, we're going to do, where we're going to go. It is his relationship and my relationship, and it's it, it's between him and me. I think that that's the most important thing that we all need. That's that's that that's I've seen because you know what God wants it badly. God has made it so abundantly clear how badly He wants to be in a relationship with us. And we starve him of that love that he deserves. All of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's what I think our greatest need is. But, you know, because I was trying to wrap my mind around this whole thing. Is like, is it the, like, like Rob was saying, is it the law? Is it the death? Is it the, is it the love? So many times. So, and, and I forgot where I read this. So many times we are going to God and asking him for stuff. And that's all we do is we ask him for stuff. Oh, we might get it. We may not get it. But that's what he is. He's a, he's, a, he's a piggy bank. Like how many times do we go to God and ask him to change us versus asking him for the stuff he can give us? Like I can, I can speak. Maybe I, I, I won't give too much detail, but I really suffered with this for these past few weeks of my life have been tremendously spiritually agonizing and and strengthening at the same time i've been i've been it's i don't know how to put it 
the first few weeks, I was literally begging and pleading God to give me my way, begging him for my way. And then I didn't get my way. And then I kept begging him for my way still. And then I realized, what if, can I just accept your way? Like, what are you trying to tell me by, by, the, by the way that the things are unfolding? What am I supposed to do? And he's like, I just want to be friends with you. <laughs> I just want to be close to you. you. You've been trying to drag me around like I'm some sort of puppy telling me you want me to do this and me to do this. What about us just spending time together and getting to know each other better, Gary? Is that good enough? And like, just rebuke me. Just rebuke me. I just wanted him to do what I wanted. And I didn't, wa I didn't think about what he wanted. So there's an element here that's, that is brought out that's not said. And I'm not going to say that it's the greatest need, but I'm, I, don't, I don't know. It's, it's a very powerful, most important need. Is the need that each of us to die. Mm. Mm. So, see, as long as I'm alive and not wanting what he wants, then what mm. he wants can't happen. Man, I tell you what, he loves you enough to take that thing away from you. <laughs> you know, the, the thing is, is that's, you know, it's, you, Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ, and that's how he's getting the opportunity to live in me. Amen. So if the ultimate goal is Christ fulfilling his life out in us, then to reach that goal, the most important thing would be to die. Yeah. Now, I know that's, that, that, that requires a lot of discussion. That's just deep, but <laughs> it doesn't it good it doesn't negate well, the know, relationship. It know. doesn't. You know, it goes along it with goes it. Along it goes along with it. If you have that love relationship, that's a whole. That's how he's going to build. He's going to be yeah. teaching you. You're going to say, "Look here. When you have that love relationship, you know, you're going to realize you don't want your way. I want to do his way. Just like Jesus said, I cannot my own self do nothing. We'll yeah. come to realize I can't do nothing right. I can't do nothing good. Well, you know, there are some things, and I'm not going to say that it works this way for everybody, but. It's like if we focus on loving God more and what that means and meditating on it and praying on it and, and fasting if we need to and saying, how, do, how can I love you more? What can I do to, to, to love you more and learn from the word? You'll be surprised of how, how, how little or how, how, not to say how little, but sin stops being this thing that haunts you when you're focusing on loving God more. It, it's it, when you focus on the love of God and on first off on him loving you, that's really what makes the difference. There you go. That, I, I, I was wanting to tweak it just a little bit. But yeah, you right that's there. what makes a difference. The more that you realize how much God loves you, the less attractive sin becomes. The less attractive sin becomes when you realize, wow, what depths, what heights, what immense. I mean. I'm telling you, I don't want to cry in front of you guys, but when you're, when I, I'm begging God, begging God with all my heart to do what I want. And he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's mature enough to say no. And be patient enough to listen to me for weeks. I'm sure I, I'm sure I bugged him to death. Weeks listened to me and still was like, are you done yet? Are you ready to like, to be friends now <laughs> you know it's just he's 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 so different than humans he's so amen ah, i don't know how to put it well praise god yeah, amen. Sir. i don't want him like me <laughs> <laughs> but as they're talking you know isaac i mean what comes to my mind is we need to take self out of the equation so even that deliberation you're having, I mean, until you realize it's not about you. Because when you ask the question, Ephesians 2, it came to my mind. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So as we realize that it's not about us, and when Paul says you have to die in self every day, that part of it is... It, is so much understanding, which is why everybody's walk with Christ is so different. 
because you really have to be taking self out of the equation because this world has taught us that it, it is about us. The focus is about us. You have some people even telling others that they are mini gods. So mm. it's to take self out of the equation and allowing Christ to work through you. So I mean, like part of my prayer you now is Lord, help me to navigate this world. Help me to allow you to lead me, to work through me. It's not about what I'm thinking and designing for myself, because that's how we are taught. So, which is why each time we just have, so it's, it's just, I remember there was a gentleman who was telling me I don't have to read the Old Testament because it doesn't apply to me. So when Diane said that Deuteronomy 28 is Old Covenant, we need to go through that and explain that to me too, for me to understand. Yes, covenant. yes we can talk about that. Because you have some people who say Old Testament doesn't apply. Read what Paul's ri Paul writes to you, <laughs> uh, to us, because that was meant for us. So the past that they disregard, because I read Deuteronomy 28, for example, and I'm thinking that there are aspects that will apply to me. If I don't love God with all my heart, then just maybe not everything will work out for me. I may be right, I may be wrong. But because he's refining, well, so I would like a discussion on that, just based on what you yeah, saying. We, 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 yeah, we. I think I think that is valid. There's some good points. I think Dave brought up a point earlier about Jesus and his divinity, and yeah. how we can know that Jesus is fully divine, how Jesus is fully God, but yet yeah. was fully a man. You know, and so I think that those are important things to discuss too. But uh, let's have a prayer. I think that tonight was a really was a really rich rich discussion and rich blessing. And I I thank you, uh, lad, for well, saying some saying some good things and not letting me just go away and sounding crazy, but straighten it out. I'm not closing it yet, but you you can speak, lad. Well, there there is a really good text. I think it fits what you're saying because you're talking about life, right, and living. And we talked about dying and getting in the way. So the whole idea, if I was to ask the question, how do you kill self? You know, there's a Bible text that tells you, oh. and it is so it, wonderful. It actually gives you the, it, it helps you to understand what you need and what's the right direction to proceed and, and ask them, how then do I get this thing? What, what puts me in the position to get this thing that kills self? Oh. It's uh, Romans chapter eight, verse 13. And it says, for if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Mm. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body you shall live <laughs> if you through the spirit mortify the deeds of the body mortify means to it's pathology is to die right. to kill render right. void. and the idea that the only way to live is if we receive the spirit of the of god that's what kills self not mm. you and I. Not we, can't, effort. we can't do that. Right. So the real question is, is if, if, if okay, so if, if lad was out of the way, who would get to leave? Jesus. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus, right. If lad was out of the way. So the thing is, is when it said you shall live, I think this is what you've been getting at. This life that he promises is being completely governed and filled with his spirit. That's and right. what that looks like. So it, it, the only way to get self out of the way is not to try to get self out of the way. Mm, but to surrender. Self right. can't self can't cast self out. Yeah. See, one of the one of the one of the one of the best parts of, of this whole thing. And I mean, it's 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 a I mentioned earlier about abiding, abiding in Christ abiding in Christ. That's literally what the, the highest calling that he's asked us to do is to abide, is to trust and, and obey, but it's to abide, to be in him, to be connected to the vine so the vine can bring the sap to, so that we can bear fruit. And when we start bearing fruit, then God, the father, goes through the pruning process of making sure that no suckers start coming up to start popping up here, popping up here. And that pruning process can be, can be painful but then you start bearing more and more and more fruit. Bearing fruit is not our job. Like you said, lad, we, the branch itself is not responsible for the fruit that's bore. It's okay. the vine that provides the life and the sap that comes out of that. 
It's the husbandman that does the pruning. All the branch has to do is abide and stay there, and it will happen. It will happen as a natural result. It's not something that human effort can do. Like you said, we can't prune ourselves. We can't, we can't, we we can't even abide by ourselves. It's just, it's just, we just have to die. Like you said, you got to be still. Be still, know that I'm God. What's the best way to be still? Be dead. You can't be more well, still than being dead. And I've learned this. I've learned you got to stop what's not meant to work in order for what's meant to work to start happening. <laughs> <laughs> okay so now well, that's i'm telling you how important that is i'm telling you because we've all got relationships with jesus but are all of us bearing the fruits of the spirit that our lives look just like christ so have mercy they're there i've come to learn this in my own life so in hebrews chapter four it talks about the rest well i think that yeah. rest is the importance yes. of the divine nature oh, the sabbath, man. so Ooh. the sabbath is so crucial well, no, wait a minute. I mean, the rest that he's speaking of there, he's speaking of the Sabbath as a symbol of the reality of experiencing being filled with the Spirit. Okay. Right. No, the, the Sabbath is a tool. The yeah, Sabbath isn't the end all. The Sabbath is an object lesson, too. Yeah, but I don't want you to miss the point. The, the rest that he says that there's a rest that we're supposed to enter in, the goal is not the Sabbath. The goal is enter into Christ's rest, which is being right. filled with his Spirit. So now he says something so, so important. He said, he that is entered into his rest, the rest of Christ, being filled with the spirit, self dies, you're governed by the spirit of God. He said, he has ceased from his own works. Yes. That's right. Him. So the idea that I tell you, the thing that gets in the way of law, and I'm, I'm speaking from experience, is we get in the way because we do not, I, I have not been absolutely convinced that this is entirely his work and I contribute my part to it. And that's what mm. is in the way. If I abs Whoa. listen, you ain't gonna get me to jump off my house and start flapping my wings, my my arms, and think that I'm gonna stay in the air. I'm absolutely convinced that won't happen. So you ain't gonna get me to even you can't love me a million dollars to think it's gonna take place. I, I think when, from when at least me when i get to the point that there ain't nothing that i can do to bear the fruit that jesus said he promised but and be convinced of that and then be convinced that only it comes by faith just receiving it no other way total gift that is when all that that all that will take place bam just like that but it's becoming convinced of that if i'm not convinced then what I'll do is I will try. <laughs> so and, look, and I will interject good. part of my attempts and my efforts, mingle it with God, and think that me and Him working together is going to bring about the fruits. I, of the so I think, lad, if you, if you look, and this isn't the, this isn't to bring up another discussion, but at the end of time, not just one hundred forty-four thousand, but after everyone that is sealed is sealed, they will be. Revelation 14, 12 come, come, come uh, fulfilled. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ. And the faith of Jesus Christ, meaning the faith in Jesus or the faith of Jesus, that's what that is. That's what Jesus had. That's what we all need to have is that complete trust in him, in him to live that perfect life within us. To, oh, you know, what, one thing Dr. Keith told me, one thing Dr. Keith told me, his, his, one of his favorite verses is Jude 1, 28, I think. 24, unto him that is able to keep us from falling and present us falling. How do, you, how, does, how, does, how do you get kept from falling? How, how does Jesus keep us from falling? But how, he said, how? And, and I was like, I don't know, I, I, by his spirit. Me. He's like, yeah, but what if, what if you're leaning on him? You lean on him. If you lean on Jesus, you're not going to fall. He can keep you because because what you're, you're putting all your weight, you're putting all your energy, you're putting everything you have on him and he keeps you from falling. And I was like, wow, Dr. Keith, that's so simple, but so powerful. Amen. So anyway, let's pray. Heavenly Father, what rich, abundant blessings and treasures are in your word. And this was just a short, brief moment that we spent together. Um, I know that in the morning you desire to be with us. And Father, I pray that you would wake us up and give us that desire to also be with you. 
these days that we're, we're, we're approaching faster than we really, really, really understand are going to be severe tests, severe trials. And in the, in the morning, before Jesus got to face his day, before Jesus was bombarded with the needs of others and, and the, 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 the people that were out to get him, he made sure to spend time with you because that was where he got his strength from. And Father, this is the same for us. If he set this example for us, then who are we to think we don't need that time with you? So please, Father, I pray that you would, you would help each of us because we are weak. We have made mistake. There are thousands and thousands of years, even more so of sins, degradation on humanity uh, than when Christ was around. And Satan has invented all sorts of devices that will distract us and that will get us off track. So please put a hedge of protection around each of us. May we all have angels that exceed in strength to protect us, to inspire us, to, as we read, to, to help us to understand, to teach us the way that you would have us to go. That, Father, our, our greatest need is, is you, is a relationship with you, the connection with you. And the only way that we can do that is through your son, Jesus Christ. And so I thank you for providing everything that we need. Like Diane said, we have what we need. We have what we need, but we, we need to realize how badly we really need it. We, we can do nothing without you. And so I, I, I thank you for humbling us, for showing us how small we are by just looking at how big and great you are. I thank you for that special music today that, that really put that into perspective of how great thou art. And so again, I just ask you, bless us the rest of this week. Give us strength, uh, protect our family members, and uh, may we have a wonderful Sabbath experience with you as well uh, in the next uh, Sabbath that comes up. And as your word says, from Sabbath to Sabbath, we will continue to worship before you. Jesus gave us a promise that as long as we're in him, as long as we believe in him, we shall never die. So I just thank you for all these precious promises. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.